Once upon a time, up on a time, right up on top of the time, there lived two brothers called Basil and Septimus. Now, Septimus was very rich, and Basil was very poor. Septimus was horrid. He never gave so much as a cut-off bit of toenail to Basil. Basil had to work hard all day as a farmer, while Septimus rode past in a shining carriage, oh, laughing, oh, and spitting grape pips out of the window. Oh, got him! Oh. Well, Basil paid no attention, went on with his work, and planted his field with turnip seeds. Turnips? Oh, how boring! You're on, said Septimus as he rode past. You'll never be rich like me. I never have to eat boring old turnips. <laughs> Drive on somewhere nice. <laughs> well, the seeds in Basil's field began to grow. And one turnip grew bigger and bigger and seemed as if it was never going to stop growing. And finally, the turnip was so enormous that Basil thought, well, he just had to show it off to the king. So he put the turnip in his best cart, <coughs> nearly broke it, and whoosh, whoosh, drove it round to the palace. Ah, what strange thingy is this, said the king. My, oh my, many wonderful things have come before my old eyes, but never before have I seen a chicken like this. Uh, no, it's, it's a turnip, your madge. Oh, is it? Oh, it's a whopper, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. What a fabo prezi for me. Uh, no, King, I, I was only going to show it to you. I've never had such a lovely present. And in return, I shall give you gold and meadows and herds of animals. Anim 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 I could never say that properly. Animals. Herds of animals to make you happy and rich. Cool. Thanks, Madge, said Basil, and danced home as happy as a fly on a poo. <laughs> but when his nasty brother, Septimus, heard what lucky Basil had been given for one single turnip, <laughs> he became horribly jealous <laughs> and wondered how he could get the king to give him loads of presents. <laughs> so Septimus took gold and fine white horses as gifts for the king and said to himself, if my stupid brother got so much for one turnip, what will I get in return for such beautiful things as these? A lot, that's what. The king took the gold and the white horses and said, thank you, and thank you so much. Everyone's giving me presents today, it's great. <clears throat> and the king, remember, yes. In return, I have nothing to give you that is more rare and excellent than this da, 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 gigantic turnip. Oh, what? said Septimus and bashed his head against the wall in a temper tantrum. I hate turnips. Oh, blimey. And he drove his brother's turnip home at top speed in a furious rage and stuck it in his barn and slammed the door. I can't stand turnips, especially biggies and he ate his own trousers in a fury. He was so full of anger and rage, he didn't know what to do with himself. He, he, he broke all the windows in his house, he, he, he flushed all his toys down the lav, and shouted and screamed till his nose went green. What is it? What do you want? What? what? Oh, yes. But then, suddenly, he saw an advert in the yellow pages for five villainous murderers with knives in their teeth and stones in their hearts, offering themselves for hire. The wicked old Septimus decided to have Basil killed. He hired the murderers, then he went to his brother and said, uh, 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 Dear Brother Basil, uh, you know how I like you? Lots and lots. Well, guess what? I've just found out that there's loads of secret treasure uh, buried in a deserted forest around the corner and, and I'd like to share it with you because I like you. Lots and lots. Come on. Whoa, Brillo pads! Even more money! This is my lucky day, said Basil, without suspecting a thing. And off they went. And soon enough, they came to the deserted forest. And Septimus suddenly said, Uh, right, um, uh, 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 oh, oh dear, um, I think I've forgotten my, my, my special hat I, I wear for walking in deserted forests, uh, and I'll be back in a minute. Oh. 
And he ran away as fast as a leopard, shouting, OK, you can kill him now! Which was the secret code to tell the murderers to come and kill Basil. And the five murderers, with stones in their hearts and knives in their teeth, leapt out at Basil and said, We're gonna free you! What? We're gonna free you! I'm sorry, I can't tell what you're saying. You've got knives in your teeth. Oh, sorry, mate. We're murderers and we're gonna kill you. We're gonna what? We're gonna kill him. Why? Because we're murderers and that's what we do. Really? I thought we were supposed to swim about the place with fishes' tails. That's mermaids, not brain, not murderers. We're murderers. Oh, I thought we weren't doing much swimming. Let's, look, just stop talking. We've got a job to do. Get your knife back in your teeth and let's get on with it. Oh, OK. We're gonna... What's that? And suddenly, they heard a strange voice coming through the forest. All things bright and beautiful. Spack! All creatures great and small. Spack! Oh, no, it's a teacher. The murderer's panicked. If he catches us trying to kill someone, he'll smack our butts, won't he? Let's get out of here. And they shoved Basil inside a sack and hung it on a tree. OK, that's great. Everyone will think he's an orange or something. Let's go. And off they went like ants whose pants are on fire. Poor Basil twisted and wriggled and pulled and stretched and finally got his head out of the sack and saw the teacher below the tree. All things bright and viewed. Ah, good morning, tree. Have you been a good boy? Really? Well, I don't believe you. Thwack! 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 Then Basil called out, Hello down there. Good grief. I thought you were an orange. And the teacher quickly let Basil down to the ground and helped him out of the sack. What are you playing at in that sack? Not misbehaving, are you? Oh, oh no, sir. I'm not naughty. But my brother Septimus has tried to have me murdered. What disgraceful behaviour! He deserves a sound thrashing. <coughs> Let me get in the sack and I will teach this brother of yours a lesson. You climb up the tree and hide in the branches and you'll see what happens to people who are naughty. So Basil quickly put the teacher in the sack and hoisted him up the tree. Then scampered to the topmost branches where some bluebirds invited him to share their nest. So he would be well hidden. After a while, Septimus came sneaking along below to check that the murderers had done their job properly. And he was frightened when he heard the teacher call out, Hello down there! Because Septimus couldn't see where the voice was coming from and thought it might be Basil's ghost. That! It wasn't me that murdered you, Basil! Cross my heart! The teacher called out, I'm up here in this magic sack. In a short time in this sack, I have learned everything there is to know in the world. I know where the hole in the donut goes when you've finished it. I know what happens to all the odd socks that get lost in the washing. I know why you never see any baby pigeons. And I also know where all the belly button fluff comes from. Would you like to share in all this knowledge, little man? Oh, yes, please, cried Septimus. I'm a very rich man, but I'd like to be very clever as well. So Septimus took the sack down, let the teacher out, and quickly got in himself. Then the teacher hung him in the tree, got out his best cane, and thwack! There's lesson one! Thwack! There's lesson two! And thwack, thwack, thwack! There's one for luck! Well, three, really. Ha, ha! Right! I must be off now. School starts in a minute. Boys to beat. And I hope you'll all behave yourselves in future. And he strode away, spanking a few untidy looking trees as he went. Comb those leaves. Straighten those branches. Thwack, thwack. All things bright. And thwack, thwack, thwack. Basil waited all night. And when morning came, he climbed down from the bird's nest to let his brother out of the sack. Oh, am I relieved to see you, cried Septimus. A teacher hung me up in this sack and said I would learn everything there is to learn in the world. But I didn't learn anything. Nothing at all, asked Basil. Well, not really, except as I was hanging there upside down and thinking I was all alone and would surely be in the sack until my dying day. I thought to myself, now if I had a brother who loved me, He'd come looking for me, and I'd be saved. But then I thought, why should my brother Basil love me when I've always been so cruel to him? And I made a promise that if you saved me, 
I would be, I would be nice to you for, for, forever and ever. I would hug you forever and ever and love you forever. Yes, all right, all right, said Basil. I'll forgive you on one condition. Anything, anything. What is it, my dear, dearest brother? You have to eat the turnip. No, never. I'm oh, very well, then. And for ten years to come, Septimus had turned it for breakfast, dinner and tea, till it was all gone, except a sprouty bit at the top that they kept to show their grandchildren, in case they wouldn't believe that the story of the giant turnip was true. Because, of course, it is. Perfectly true. <laughs>